Welcome to the Scourgey Law Lunch Break. This is your time of the day to learn a little bit about the law while you enjoy your lunch. Last week we talked about bullying in the workplace. Today we'll talk about bullying at school. A judge in Philadelphia recently ruled in favor of bullied school children across Pennsylvania when he entered a judgment against the Philadelphia School District and in favor of a former student, Miss Amanda Weibel, who had been bullied viciously in the amount of over $1 million, which consisted of a damage award of $500,000 and an award of $578,000 in attorney's fees and expert witness fees. But it was not the Pennsylvania Public School Code on which the young girls, uh, lawyers, and the judge ultimately relied in rendering the decision in favor of the school of the former school student. It was the Pennsylvania Human Relations Act. And this appears to be a case of first impression in which a trial court judge found a school district liable under the Pennsylvania Human Relations Act for failing to stop or prevent severe bullying of one of its students. And I'm going to read some of the facts from the trial court uh, judge's written opinion, and I think you'll agree with me that uh, there was severe bullying going on in the Philadelphia School District, and it's just outrageous that the school district allowed it to continue and didn't stop it. During the trial, a licensed clinical psychologist testified that Ms. Weibel suffered from complex type post-traumatic stress disorder and compared her educational experience in the Philadelphia school system to being in a war zone. At four different schools in the district, Ms. Weibel was subjected to persistent taunting, teasing, bullying, harassment, ostracization, and beatings because of her gender presentation. In short, Ms. Weibel was something of a tomboy. Because of this, other students called her names, such as it, she male, freak, weirdo, and some other very vulgar uh, terms. Which I, won't men, uh, which I won't mention. Students stole, damaged, or destroyed her property, including school books and homework. Students punched, shoved, slapped, stepped on, and tripped Miss Weibel, elbowed her in the head, spat on her, stabbed her with a pencil, threw things at her, dumped water and milk on her, shoved food in her hair, and ripped out chunks of her hair. And some of these incidents occurred at one school from three to four days a week to daily, and sometimes multiple times a day. In typically perverse fashion, Miss Weibel herself was suspended once for fighting back. The teachers and principal, though fully aware of the abuse, did virtually nothing either to protect Miss Weibel or to punish the perpetrators of the abuse, instead telling her to ignore her attackers and tormentors. The principal sometimes accused Miss Weibel of lying. The principal later threatened to expel Miss Weibel if she were to be involved in another incident. Another incident means another time she's attacked. After having been beaten in the head by a group of girls, Miss Weibel saw the principal hugging one of her assailants and patting another on the shoulder. In Orwellian fashion, the same school tried to resolve Miss Weibel's problems by putting her through peer mediation, in which one of her peer mediators was one of her tormentors. And of course, having been thus empowered by the school, the peer mediator insulted Miss Weibel and called her a stupid bitch when the counselor who was presiding over the mediation left the room so that the two could be alone to mediate. Miss Weibel suffered profound psychological and physiological harm from the violence and the abuse perpetrated by the other students, including PTSD, panic attacks, depression, anxiety, profound sleep disorder, stomach aches, headaches, suicidal thoughts, uh, at least one concussion, and a condition which causes the brain to amplify minor pain signals. Her grades suffered, she was isolated, uh, even from her own friends, and ostracized. The judge found that as a result of the deliberate indifference of the school district to the abuse Ms. Weibel suffered, Ms. Weibel was denied equal access to the accommodations, advantages, facilities, or privileges of the, of the district's schools on the basis of her sex in violation of the Pennsylvania Human Relations Act. So this is kind of a novel uh, application of the Pennsylvania Human Relations Act to bullying at school. We at Scaringi Law have heard of many accounts of students being bullied in school and the Pennsylvania Human Relations Act, which addresses discrimination based on race, color, familial status, religious creed, and ancestry, etc., is not really available to most of those students. 
anti-bullying rules at school are typically bully full employment acts. While schools are required to report serious criminal offenses to the police, not every act of abuse will rise to that level. And if the police show up and threaten the victim, what good is the statute? The fact is, there are few legal protections for kids who, for whatever reason, don't conform or fit in with whatever are the prevailing customs of the students who rule the school. However, this Philadelphia trial court judge's decision in this case involving Ms. Weibel is a step toward expanding the rights of bullied children by giving them a cause of action and claim against the school district through the Pennsylvania Human Relations Act for failing to stop this severe bullying. Now, if your child is being bullied at school and the school district personnel are not properly addressing and remedying the problem, give Scaringi Law's education law attorneys a call at 717-657-7770. Well, that's about all the time we have today for the Scaringi Law lunch break. Thanks for listening and enjoy your lunch.